I was told at first that there wasn't enough room to get in for jury selection. So I was sort of meandering with the uh, crowd, just not mingling, just observing. This is the courthouse in Austin. There was not as much media there. In fact, I don't think there was any media there, uh, except for the the cameras for the Austin State Court to, to run it live. I see Barnes has popped into the house. Let's bring Barnes in. This is a surprise. Bar oh, does he, Robert, do you see me? I do. Okay, geez. sorry. I think you might your, your audio might be high there. Um, Robert, I'll just I'm going to relay my experience this morning because I I, I I was there. You get I go into the the main lobby. They asked me if I was there for jury selection, and I didn't understand that they had a whole table specifically for people for, what do they call it? Free speech systems. It's called uh, Ponzer versus free speech systems. So people don't necessarily even know why they're there. But the jury selection, everyone went upstairs. They're waiting around in the hallway for court to start. And uh, the marshal said, I, I, I shouldn't go in because there might not be enough room. And it's really just for the jury members. And so I just sat there for a little bit looking around gauging the people that were there for jury selection i got into a discussion with one person but didn't ask him anything about anything uh just he said um said are you here for jury selection he said yes and i said uh you ever done it before and he said no i think and then he and then he went on to explain that the questionnaire that he got said that the questionnaire had some interesting questions some some weird questions whether or not you know what QAnon is where you get your news from if you watch infowars this individual didn't seem to know who Alex Jones was, which I found surprising. Uh, but because the sheriff said I shouldn't go in, I went for a walk to the Capitol Hill. Building is beautiful. Then I came back um, and I witnessed a bit of it before going into lunch. And I told Robert when I got back, uh, it was the defense asking, picking out certain jury members. They all looked very, very diverse. So old, young, white, black, Latino, uh, Asian, a, a few. Uh, Women, men, old, and I would say maybe 10% were wearing face masks. Maybe, probably less. Um, but the, when I got there to see the jury selection, the, def, the plaintiff's attorney was asking people if they would have a problem awarding damages, Robert, in the absence of a ledger, you know, uh, identifying a quantum. And the, the, the plaintiff's counsel was throwing around a number in the order of, 100 to 200 million dollars would you have a problem uh with that type of uh, uh award and he was he was he was going between punitive damages and emotional distress and robert i mean i think we discussed it yesterday but uh, he might be fudging concepts here under texas law it yes be, i mean because there is to my knowledge there is no punitive damages claim because they did, did not follow texas law for preserving such a claim and uh, Texas has specific, I mean, honestly, the, the case shouldn't be here under Texas law because you're supposed to give a certain kind of notice and opportunity to correct and retract before you even file suit. It's not clear they even complied with that, but you have to give a particular kind of notice to even have access to punitive damages and punitive damages are also capped. My understanding is there is no punitive damages claim here. So what they're really doing is they're, uh, they're, they're disguising their punitive damages claim, which they're legally not entitled to, as emotional damages. And they're planting that idea in the, in the juror's head. And what they want the jury to do is to say, we hate Alex Jones, so we're going to award a crazy verdict that does not reflect an actual number uh, of monetary compensation for actual emotional injury. Uh, my view is that these plaintiffs have not suffered meaningful emotional injury from anything caused by Alex Jones. The evidence for that is that none of them in a timely way ever submitted a correction request, a retraction request, an apology request, any of it, it's, which is completely unheard of in a defamation case. Who's heard of a defamation case where you never file a request to let somebody know, hey, by the way, your statement's not accurate uh, or your statement is hurtful? Um, never happened. Now, and the reality is that had they done so, they likely know that Jones would have uh, timely responded and 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 fixed any issues as he has done when he got things wrong in the past. So the that's why the whole case, in my view, is a made up case. Uh, it's not real injuries. Jones didn't cause Sandy Hook. Most of what InfoWars covered said Sandy Hook happened. Jones didn't send people to harass people at people's homes, um, any of that. But what you're seeing in the jury selection is the plaintiffs are getting away with questions that generally courts are not supposed to allow 
You're not supposed to say, hey, jury, which one of you are with us and which one are you against us? Which one are you going to give a crazy verdict? Which ones won't? Usually, I mean, judges have shut me down when I've asked any question that could sound like I'm asking a leading question for a verdict. Uh, so but this judge is so biased that when one of the jurors was like 100 million for hurt feelings, the judge, according to published reports that I saw, stood, suddenly lectured that juror and everyone else. So oh, this isn't about hurt feelings, it's about emotional distress, about defamation. Another juror, when they asked, they're like, hold on a second. We don't get to decide defamation. What's going on here? So I, I was actually I actually caught something along those lines when I was there. Someone said, well, um, it, it was an Indian woman. And she, uh, Indian from India, uh, not uh, Native American. Not, dots, not feathers. Well, I, you won't catch me saying that, making that decision. That's, <laughs> that's from The Simpsons, I think. I, I got it from a, a Native American friend of mine. Uh, he, he's the one who told me, he goes, oh, no, Bob, feathers, not dots. Feathers, not. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, is it okay if I say that? He's like, absolutely. I was like, okay, I got permission. <laughs> It was. I think it was a joke in The Simpsons back in the day when those jokes were acceptable humor. Um, so she said, uh, "She said, well, well, is are we going to be told what defamation is?" And this was the, def uh, the 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 plaintiff's counsel said, "Well, you don't need to worry about defamation. He's already been found guilty of defamation and causing emotional distress. Now it's a question of quantum. Are you going to have a problem uh, attributing a number in the absence of a ledger or?" And I think he actually said ver not verified, but demonstrable uh, or quantifiable damages. That's what he said. And um, and then what? And then then he called up another juror and said, "Are you going to have a problem with, an, you know, hypothetically, if we're talking a hundred, two hundred million dollars, or, or do you have an aversion, a bias against that type of quantum for?" Punitive damage, uh, oh, uh, emotional distress, and so they were they were fluttering between the two concepts, which is unheard of, by the way. They're talking about a jury verdict for emotional distress that has never been awarded in the history of America, in the history of the country. They want to bankrupt Alex Jones. That's their goal. Their goal is to censor him permanently, take him off the air, seize uh, his uh, web domain, seize his camera equipment, seize everything. That's their goal by getting in a lunatic verdict the law doesn't support and the facts don't support, which is why the judge had to help rig the trial. And is part. And as far as I can tell from the public commentary I have seen, is rigging the jury selection as part of that process. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe the number because I, I and I asked. I didn't ask a jury member because I don't want to be making headlines. Viva tampering with jury while selections going on. I asked the person who was recording the audio. I think for the courthouse. I said, who who threw out the number one hundred to two hundred million dollars? Because that's like on the one hand feeling out. For anyone who says, one guy said, I'd have to see a heck of a lot of evidence of damages for it to contemplate that type of award. Okay, thank you. Sit down. But worse still is that it, it, it creates the impression with the entire jury, because this is the, the plaintiff's attorney is as, is pulling up one jury perspective juror after another in the entire room with everybody hearing the questions. So now it's like the litmus test or the 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 the, the threshold has been set. Well, if we if we only find for five million dollars, it's a discount from the hundreds to two hundred million dollars that we were we were tested on, and it, it just kept like poisoning the pool. But above all else, filtering out the ones who are going to be averse to a massive payout, and just conditioning everybody to think, well, heck, if the lawyer's talking about a hundred to two hundred million dollars, one to ten million is going to be reasonable. And uh, I, I uh, and this I was is surprised. just the first case. I mean, they're talking about a hundred million for just one plaintiff. And, you know, the, they, they got another case coming in Texas and then another case in Connecticut with a bunch more people. And again, it's public information that very substantial settlement offers in the six figures were made. That became part of the public proceedings in the bankruptcy case and uh, that they turned it down. And, and now you have a sense of what they want. to. They This case has always been political. It has nothing to do with people feeling emotionally traumatized by anything. That that's that is the pretext for a jury to shut down and silence Alex Jones. That's what it's always been about. That's that's what today continued to prove. Uh, and unfortunately, I did not see evidence that an impartial jury will be formed in this case. When plaintiff's lawyers are allowed to ask patently impermissible questions like that, and the judge is lecturing anyone who raises a question about it, that means uh, that uh, and scolds them for even second guessing the wisdom of such a ridiculous lunatic verdict. Uh, then that gives you an idea of what a complete kangaroo court this court is in Travis County and that they're trying to railroad Alex Jones 
to try to, again, you know, bankrupt him to the point where he is unable and incapable to be on the air. I, I was uh, surprised about one thing. Even the marshals at the courthouse, some of them did not seem to know that the Alex Jones trial was going on. Uh, people across the street at the diner didn't know. The one individual who t offered anything to me didn't seems to not have known who Alex Jones was uh, addressing some comments yesterday. People are under the impression that everybody knows who Alex Jones is. We live in our own silo sometimes where we take for granted. Everybody knows what's going on in the world. Everybody knows, by the way, I am getting to Trudeau talking about a 30% reduction in fertilizer. We take for granted. Everybody knows that. Robert, what were the stats you told me about people who vote and, uh, and, and where they vote? Like 10%, yeah. like 30%? I mean, I mean, we have over 300 million Americans in this country. Um, and on average, uh, you know, the uh, only two thirds will vote in any election for the most part, uh, less than half turn out to vote in most elections in the United States. And so when you realize that, you realize it's not a surprise. I mean, according to YouGov's own public polls, half of America didn't know who Alex Jones was. Um, and the and so that's it. Now, in Austin, that number will probably be less because he's been here for 25 plus years uh, in the, you know, in the public arena. But uh, my guess would be one out of three people in Austin, you've got a lot of people that have moved here over the past 20 years, still don't know who Alex Jones was. And that's why, or is, and that's why they had to fix the jury. So even though they have a liberal democratic jury pool that leans in their direction instinctively, um, that they, they needed to fix the case because uh, when I had just went around randomly asking people about this case, you know, diners, cab drivers, Uber drivers, everyday folks. Um, if they didn't have a strong opinion already about Alex Jones, when I described the case, they're like, this, this doesn't even sound like a credible case. Somebody's suing him. Be, uh, I mean, as one of the jurors said, over hurt feelings. Um, and they didn't even file a complaint or retraction. They didn't ask, ask him to fix it beforehand when it happened. And they're wanting me to write a big check. Most most ordinary people who don't have a, a dog in the fight, so to speak, uh, the, your ordinary juror, a true impartial jury member of the community is the Constitution under both the Texas State Constitution, and the United States Constitution applies here. Uh, the average verdict was zero. Uh, that was the average verdict. And so that's why they had to fix the case on terms of not allowing him to defend himself on the merits. That's why they had to fix the case in terms of him not being able to ask questions about what really caused injury. And now they're fixing the case in jury selection. Um, and the goal is to have this narrative at later on, you know, a year from now, you'll have a narrative, well, a jury uh, decided the case and they found Alex Jones guilty and they found a big verdict, right? The media will just selectively lie down the road about what's really happening here. This is one of the greatest disgraces in the history of the rule of law in America. Uh, the, the lawyer, the, again, the plaintiff's lawyer, and when he said, well, he's already been found guilty of defamation and infliction of emotional distress, so, so help me goodness, Robert, I can understand the emotional distress argument, and I can even be very sympathetic to it. But the defamation part, it was even Alex Jones said it was a hoax, that defamatory. And, and the, the way the, the, the plaintiff's lawyer said it, and look, it's true in that if he's been found guilty by default, he's been found guilty. And so it really is a question of only the quantum and not the substance. So everyone's going to start off saying and thinking guilty on defamation, guilty on inf infliction of emotional distress. Very few are going to appreciate, and I'm not even sure that they're going to talk about it, that it was by default, by being foreclosed oh, from pleading. They're not allowed to discuss it. Not only that, he's not allowed to say it wasn't outrageous. He's not allowed to say his conduct wasn't intentional. He's not, and not only that, he's not allowed to ask them questions about whether something else has caused them emotional distress. He's not, in other words, is he the cause, because for a tort, you got three claims. First part is liability. Did you do something wrong? Second part is causation. And the third part is the damages. The second and the third part is what this trial is supposed to be about. But the judge is also basically trying to gut his defense on causation. Yes, these are plaintiffs. Some of these plaintiffs have suffered emotional trauma, but it wasn't from Alex Jones. It was from their child being killed by a shooter. And there may have been other people responsible for that, and school safety officials, school safety response, et cetera. But that had nothing to do with Alex Jones. Jones is not allowed to ask them whether anything else caused them emotional trauma. He's not even allowed to bring up the shooter's name. Um, that's how bad it is. Uh, and there's been more rulings like that. And the, how the jury is going today, jury selection, that is, 
that they're trying to pick a partial prejudicial jury that has preordained a large amount of damages uh, to the prejudice of Alex Jones, based on how I, from what my understanding of what happened today. Yeah, and and my understanding of what I heard, I did not hear all of it by any means, is that uh, the, the, the plaintiff's attorney was basically suggesting, we're not going to have any evidence. We're not going to have concrete damages. You're going to have to pick a number. So are you going to have a problem ascribing a number when there's going to be no ledger, was one of the words he used, detailing concrete damages.